Here we go. Spoiler alert, audience. Fired up. Fired up. Hi, everybody. Happy birthday, Kendall. Happy birthday. You're 40 now by the time. Hi, everybody. Hello, Kansas. Hello, Missouri. Hello, Minnetonka. Hello, St. Louis Park. Hello, Invergrove Heights and the Coon Rapids. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the show. That is Monday right there. Super Bowl Monday. That's right. All of these people are missing work. They all called in sick, and now they're at a live show. We love them, though. Have a seat. Let's get started. Happy Super Bowl Monday. Happy Super Bowl Monday. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a rousing, rousing cheer for our good friend, Miss Kendall, everybody. Hello, Kendall. Hey. How you doing? Hi. Hi. How you doing? <laughs> I'm real tired Are you today. tired? You were up late watching the, uh, the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then we, we went to Red Wing to visit my parents to watch it because oh. more food, duh. And then we drove Had a home. Drove. Oh, really? That's a, that's the, you did a, that's a nice thing you did for your family there. I know. I'm very entertaining when I'm tired, though, so. Yeah, good. Well, I can't wait. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, you'll remember on Friday, if you listen to Friday's show. Yep. I, I was very open, very honest. I said, hey, we only have two people signed up for our studio audience. You know, because it's winter. It's hard to get people to come to, I always say this, come to the prairie at the Eden. So I said, if we could get more people signed up, I would give them all of our uh, leftover Fox 9 Super Bowl food. So here's Aaron Schwab. No, Aaron, go ahead and start handing it out. There's an open bag of popcorn that Aaron will start giving to the audience right there. Aaron, one cupcake. Give that to that lady right there. Give that right there. And uh, give the popcorn. Ma'am, there we go. Still tastes good. Please pass it around and share it. That's right. There's enough for everybody. Anyway, um, oh, speaking, uh, speaking of the Super Bowl, I was up late fighting with people on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Now, that's never a good idea. No. I, I know better. My buddy Alexis, hashtag don't engage. But we were, ta- thank you. But we were talking about the halftime show. We'll get to it. This is lesson though. I'm normally not on Twitter a lot. You know, I don't, I love Instagram. You can follow me, Jason Matheson. But I don't, I'm not on Twitter because people just argue on Twitter, you yes. know? That's why, I like, the other Jason in the Twin Cities, uh, Jason DeRussia, good mm-hmm. question. He is, he spends all of his life on Twitter. I commend him. I was on there for three hours. I wanted to, I, I wanted to be eaten by a bear. I, I just, know. You know what I mean? I know. It was horrible. Mm-hmm. So to all of you that I argued with on Twitter, I'm sorry. I have some popcorn. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'll just, yeah. It's hard. I'm never doing it again. No. I'll just no. argue with people here. Yeah. That's fine. I only post about car crashes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, with the traffic, yeah. Okay, you should probably clarify that, Kendall. People, oh, yeah. Yeah, you're like a traffic that. anchor, too. Okay. Sorry, For, tired. Yeah, it's all right. For people who don't know, Kendall's also a traffic anchor. She's not <laughs> celebrating uh, car crashes. Yeah. No, I'm not. I'm just informing the public. Um, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be a long show today. It's going to be with, <laughs> with tired Tina over here. Okay. Woo! Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> let's get started, everybody. It's time for the hot dish. Here we go. <laughs> I'm going to upset people today. I know I am, and that's all right. I'm ready for it. <laughs> I just got to tell you, though, speaking of being tired, I usually can ramp up the energy. Uh, you know, I do the radio show at 9, and then we meet, and then I, and then I have about an hour, and then I do it. And the, my energy level never goes down. Today, I have done nothing but argue for three hours about the halftime show. I do not know if I have it in me, but let's see. Let's, I got it. I got it. Yeah, here we go. You can do anything. I'll get worked up again. Well, we start with this. J-Lo and Shakira brought it last night for the Super Bowl halftime show. Now, before we discuss slash argue, uh, here's, a little, here's a clip.
here and J-Lo. That was actually, that was actually, that little girl was J-Lo's daughter, if you didn't know that. I thought that was a great moment right there. This is how Kendall and I should end our show every day, just like that, yeah. Okay, now, uh, this is, uh, let me say this, let me set the table here. This is a really nuanced conversation that I didn't think was going to be nuanced. We're never going to be able to cover everything that we feel in the Jason show. Uh, like I said, uh, if you want to see me lose my mind, uh, just listen to the radio show from today. <laughs> I, but anyway, I'll try to kind of give you all my thoughts. I am responding to a lot of the criticism uh, of the performance. A lot of folks on Twitter let me know that they found it too sexy, too sexualized. They felt it was... Uh, not family friendly. I don't even know what that means anymore in 2020, but we'll get to that. Uh, I gotta say, I was kind of surprised at the, the pushback, and here I'll explain why. Let me start with, and there's, like I said, this is nuance. Let me start with the family friendly thing. I think we could all agree, or maybe not, I don't know what's family friendly anymore in 2020. I don't think that really exists in, in primetime television anymore. I didn't see anything last night that I haven't seen on an episode of Blue Bloods. You know what I mean? I, I, or any other prime time show. As far as, let's talk about the outfits. People seem to be up in arms about the outfits. I, on, I respect your opinion, but I gotta tell you, I, I didn't see anything that those ladies were wearing that I haven't seen on Dancing with the Stars. You know what I mean? That, and Dancing with the Stars, and Dancing with the Stars is considered a safe show. Again, I don't even know what that means anymore. And you're barking up the wrong tree with this guy. I'm the Madonna generation. I stopped clutching my pearls about stuff like this in 91 with the comb movies. You know what I mean? I, yeah, I, so I was a little bit surprised. Now, as far as um, it's inappropriate, uh, the, the stripper pole, this was a big thing. Uh, people did not like this. Again, I will tell you, if you don't consider this family friendly, I, I, then please don't take your kids to see a Cirque du Soleil show because you're, not, you're gonna see exactly the same type of athleticism in a Cirque du Soleil show. I don't find anything overly sexual about this. And if you're worried about your kid, I, I'm just so blessed that I had a mom that didn't turn body parts into boogeymen. I mean, maybe it's an opportunity to discuss things with your kids. And as far as the, as far as the overtly sexual nature of their performances, I will say, I think you need to keep this in mind. We need to look at this through a cultural lens too. These are two Latina performances. And in, in Latin culture, dances are much more sensual than they are here in the States. We have the rumba, we have the pasa doble. By design, these dances are more sensual. This is nothing, this is nothing. And I found it wonderful that this was a celebration of a different culture projected to a large audience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kendall, I'll shut my mouth now. No, I, it's, it's, you, you go to the view to watch people argue. I yeah. agree with you a hundred percent. I honestly watched this and was just like, that was amazing. Especially when they brought the kids on stage to dance, those little tiny tots dancing yeah. around. I was like, girl, work it. That was fantastic. I thought the stripper pole thing, I just looked at it more as an artistic movement um, because that's how she was doing that specifically, and all of the music. Are we forgetting about the fact that these women are being celebrated for being over 40, and the music they sing, and the fact that they can do all that is well, cuckoo bananas and, to me. Like, why are we and, talking about that, and you know? also, And also, not to focus on the positive, but why aren't we celebrating the fact that these are two women, again, you know how I love this, redefining their ages. Yes. Can I just give you, let me, this is a joke, and this isn't really meant to be a joke. Do you guys know that Rue McClanahan was the same age as J-Lo when the Golden Girls premiered? <laughs> that was 50 in 1985, and I gotta tell you, I would much rather have this 50, a vibrant, <laughs> vibrant, strong, empowered woman. And people say, and I, and I understand it. Again, I respect the other opinions. I'm not trying to shame you, but I got a lot of comments that said, well, what's so empowering about shaking your, your thing? Feminism, feminism isn't about covering your body. It's about having the choice to do so or not, mm -hmm. is what I say to that. Mm -hmm. these, the, no one's telling these two women, both entrepreneurs, both huge in the charity world, no one's telling them to do anything. They are standing tall inside themselves. They are not victims. No. They are not victims. Mm -hmm. And I gotta tell you, if I had daughters, and I don't, I admit that, but if I did, 
I would use that performance last night as a wonderful opportunity to showcase two women who are getting it done. Mm -hmm. I really do. I, that's just my opinion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. I do. I think that sometimes, I mean, women no are one, tough on each other. Y'all yes. are tough on each other. I will say that yeah, too. Yeah, there's a lot of judgment. There's a lot of judgment. I what bothered me and has been brought up a few times is that it never bothered me that in Maroon 5 last year took like Adam Levine took I, his shirt off. It didn't bother me standard. at all. Yes. And that was like not talked about on any level. But this is, and that's where that line is like, well, come on people, it's 2020. Yeah, I mean, being empowered doesn't necessarily mean you have to be buttoned up. That's empowered to them. And again, mm -hmm. I, I, I just, it, it shocked me. It, it, it just, it shouldn't, it's really dramatic. It surprised me a little bit. But mm -hmm. anyway, I thought it was great. The rest of this show will be great. And we'll be right back after this. Stay with us, everybody. Say it isn't so. The crown on Netflix is coming to an end. Why the news is actually a bit of a shock. Plus, find out who will play the queen in the final season. Then, every one of you has an opinion on the Super Bowl commercial. Were they big hits or were they big disappointments? We'll go through our list of winners, big old losers. Potato, potato, potato. Boom! Boom! And producer Ted's quest for love brings him to the motorcycle show. Will the right hog be enough to impress the ladies? You'll find out when the Jason Show continues right after this. He's a big boy pilot with 30 sobbing Hannahs to choose from. Tune in to watch him deep kiss the white girls and high five the black girls. This season on Pilot Hunk. Whoa, your eyes are peeing. What's wrong? <laughs> Being here is really hard for me because I'm like really shy. Like, I was blushing so hard at the Thong Fashion Show. I can't believe I won. <laughs> oh, yeah, you got a Marshall's gift card. Sorry, can I steal him for a sec? I'm just, I'm having a really hard time because the producers, they confiscated my vitamins and they gave me a knife. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I want you to know that I'm not just a party girl. I could also be a wife. Like, watch me drink champagne. <laughs> Whoa, I think I'm ready to propose <laughs> that she I think I'm ready to propose too. Welcome back to the show. JJ Watt on SNL this weekend doing a, <laughs> doing a little Bachelor parody. Oh gosh, that was good. It's so, because you know why it's good? Because it's real. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's Your real. eyes are peeing. Now before we uh, go move on to, we got Shane. You know, the lip syncing though last night, we, the Super Bowl have that's kind of a little bit what bothered me. I wonder how we are discussing the commercial break. How much do you think they lip sync? 50-50? There's a track now that runs over it. And does the NFL require? Lady Gaga didn't. I just rewatched her performance. She sounded great, and obviously Prince didn't. But I, I would be curious to ask the NFL, what do they require? They need to debunk that mystery. Right. Yeah. All well, I know is that they just, like, worked. Worked, yeah. worked, worked. worked. And I know J-Lo sang, sang a little fine. live because I could hear mistakes. <laughs> I could hear, you know, yeah, her a little uh -huh. out of breath. Yeah. Well, it was an exciting night for the Kansas City Chiefs and their fans, and one member of our team was on hand for it all. Oh. It is time for Shane's final report from the Super Bowl in Miami. So we are in the stadium. It started out star-studded because Brett Favre went in the wrong tent and came right behind us in line. How much money are you wearing today? A couple hundred thousand dollars. No big yeah. thing, can you spare one? Absolutely. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah.
Yes. Hi, Doug. There's one Luke. more Sunday to get together with your friends. RJ Lower Chikira. All right, we got our very flattering vest on. We are uh, right outside the tunnel to head out on the field as soon as this game is over to celebrate. <laughs> like on the field the post post Super Bowl victory celebration see the fans sticking around as there's still quite a few players around here hugging their loved ones taking their selfies and a lot of people are collecting the confetti and did you know when it comes out it's a little Lombardi well the Chiefs they got the one that matters they did get the one that matters congratulations first time in 50 years 51 for the Kansas City mm -hmm. Chiefs. That's I don't know great. the last time they won. Uh, 50 years ago. They beat us. Oh, seriously? I'm pretty sure. That was, oh. oh. Yeah. Well, I'm, just, I'm glad. I like a good but underdog story. I yeah. like a good Rudy-esque <laughs> story. And I got to say, we were talking, I, I, the next time, you know, the networks switch who gets the, the Super Bowl every year. Mm -hmm. uh, Fox gets it every three years. Whoever has an NFL. I'm telling you, I want to go one year. I want to I want to go cover it because can you imagine me being a f I can't no. what would I ask the players on the field like you know who's your favorite Real Housewife you know what I mean <laughs> I just, yeah. she's so good just, but it'd be should, fun we should put it in the works we, we definitely should, should. I my, uh, I'll put it in my new contract I'll do that yeah <laughs> hey by the way I want to say congratulations to Doug uh, photographer Doug out there with Shane Shane and Doug did such a good job. Uh, it, it's, you know, it's, 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 it looks like fun and they do have a good time, but it's a lot of work and long hours mm -hmm. and, uh, Doug, way to go. And to our buddy Shane, you did a wonderful job mm -hmm. in Miami. You really did. You really did. So I much will fun. never forget the empanada story. The empanada, the birds attacking that woman. Yeah. <laughs> well, they watched Friday show. Thank you, audience. Yeah. Well, next to the dish, following the Super Bowl, the new season of the Masked Singer debuted. Uh, now if you missed it, here are just a few of the highlights. Look. We must leave and get undone We must engage and rearrange And turn this planet back to earth Ooh, okay. Well, that is Miss Monster, the Llama, and the Robot. Um, when all... Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just still ridiculous. I love this show, but it's just ridiculous. Uh, now, when it was all said and done, the robot got the boot, and it was, it was, it was Lil Wayne, everybody. Lil Wayne. Wow, I know. Lollipop. That was hysterical. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay. You could totally hear it was him. Oh, when he was singing. Yes. Mm -hmm. I. But this year, usually, sometimes I have clues, and I've stayed away from spoilers. I really don't know who anybody okay. is yet. It's too early. Well, and there's a lot of football players uh, this year. I think um, uh, Nick Cannon said there's like people that have won six, have been in six Super Bowls. What? On the or something like it was Sweet. a it was a figure that made me go what how Ooh. many football players are in the mask singer or maybe it's singers who were at the Super Bowl in the show in the halftime show. Can we get her a napping room? <laughs> can, we, can, we, can we put her? Can we go? Just I think we need you know there's companies that have napping pods yeah. i think we need to get you a napping pod yeah today. yeah that's i think that'd right. be good yeah next in the dish during the super bowl we got another look at the new this is one of my favorite trailers uh we got a, a look at couch jumper in the new top gun movie look my dad believed in you i'm not gonna make the same mistake you know what happens to you if you go through with this I have everything I need to have you court-martialed and dishonorably discharged. The end is inevitable, Maverick. 
What are you gonna do? June. I, I said this before when we saw the original trailer. Not my genre, not my cup of Joe. I am excited to see this. Mm-hmm. And the number one thing, I, I mean, he's, you know, it's, he's sometimes a little nutter butters, but, like, but Tom Cruise is a movie star still. And I'm star. drawn to see the movie because he's a movie star. Mm-hmm. And my goodness, I mean, we're talking about JLo. How good does he look? I mean, right? he looks like, literally, he looks. Phenomenal. Mm-hmm. It looks like he stepped off the set of Top Gun in 86 and then went right to the set of, of Maverick. And he's flying his own, he's doing his own stunts. Did you know that? I think he's so cool. Yeah, he's in that plane. Like, like, the fact that, that he yeah. does all that kind of stuff is just crazy. Yeah, it's not stunt, guys. It's, it's, he's in that plane and they have cameras attached to the plane. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. I'm into it. I love those kind of movies too, though. Yeah. You, oh, yeah, you do like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, next in the dish, fans of Netflix's The Crown, a bit upset this morning. Oh. Yes. The creator of the Netflix series says season five will be the final season. Now, fans had hoped for a sixth season that could feature the uh, Harry and Meghan makes it, but the creator says they've begun work on season five and it's become clear that it's the perfect place to stop. The most recent season is season three, that hit in November. That's going to take us until, I believe, the mid-70s? Late 70s, I think? Isn't it? End of the 80s a little bit, and then we're going to get the Diana years. <laughs> and then, yeah, that's what I want to see. I don't yeah. care. We're living the Harry and Meghan crap. That's true. I don't, you know what I mean? I don't need to. She could play herself. What? She could play she herself? She could play herself. Yeah, I know. I love this yeah, show buddy. so much. Oh, it's it's so good. Now, the creator also announced who's going to play the queen in the final season. And as predicted, it will be that woman right there, Imelda Staunton, probably yeah. best known for portraying <laughs> Dolores Umbridge in the Harry Potter movies. I, oh, I love Umbridge. She's my favorite villain in all the Harry Potter movies. Oh, she I, had those cat love plates. Yeah, she had the cat plates that meowed and talked. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, and the writing in the hand. Yeah, she, she was fantastic. <laughs> she's going to be the perfect older queen. I, yeah, yeah it, she'll this be is, great. I just please, made the worst noise. You did. So it's sorry. all right. Again, hashtag napping pod. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's again. Thank, oh, let me look at the clock. Oh, the show's half over. That's okay. okay. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Don't worry, audience. She, she'll get better. Okay. Uh, still ahead. I love you. Still ahead, everybody. We're recapping the best and worst commercials with a local advertising expert. And then, producer Ted's Need for Speed takes him to the motorcycle show. Oh my goodness, he looks like the great gazoo. Anyway, can he can he find a bike that'll help him win over the ladies? We'll be right back. Stay with us. I didn't see that. Welcome back, everybody. Okay, let's do this. Super Bowl Monday. Let's do this. Welcome back. Sure, there was a football game. Yeah, there was sports ball. Yeah, yeah. And we already broke down the halftime show. Now let's talk about the commercials. It was a star-studded night in the world of advertising. And a few, without a doubt, hit it out of the park. Here's one of them. And put your okay, camper is rising. Sure, it's Groundhog Day. Day. And don't oh, forget no. your booties because it's cold oh, out no. there today. Phil? Hey, Phil. No, not you. It's me, man, Ryerson. Okay, little fella. Good job. That's different. Good job. Hey! He got the Groundhog! <laughs> Phil? Hey, you're going to freeze to death. Who cares? See you tomorrow. <laughs> that was so good. Bill Murray brought back his movie Groundhog Day in a commercial for the new... That's so good. For the, <laughs> brought it back for the new Jeep SUV. Here to break. Here to break. Can we just roll the whole thing? I mean, anyway. Here to break down the good, the bad, the strange, and the hilarious from last night's game is the Jeep creative officer from Call McVoy. Give it up for our friend Mike. Hi again, everybody. Hi, Mike. Hi. You, you heard the reaction as a pro. Why does that work? Is it nostalgia? 
Is it a nostalgia mixed with perfect uh, casting? What is it? What's the secret? What's the recipe there? Yeah, several things coming together. Obviously, nostalgia plays huge. Bill Murray is just beloved by absolutely everyone. Yeah. But it matches with the product as well. Jeep has always stood for adventure. And this notion that no matter, even if, even if every single day in your life is exactly the same, with a Jeep, that sense of, sense of adventure will always make it different. Well, also, I think they use the intellectual property of Groundhog Day in a smart way and, and didn't waste it. They, they progressed the story in a funny way that made sense w combining yeah. with the product. Absolutely. So it didn't seem gratuitous is what I'm saying. 60 yeah. plus ads in the Super Bowl. It was the only one to capitalize on Groundhog Day. Oh, really? Yeah. The only one. Yeah. Well, Isn't that that's, unique? Yeah. That seemed like hashtag missed opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, now this next one uh, I loved. Other than the Bill Murray one, this is the one that I gave top marks to. This is uh, Amazon before Alexa. Look at this. Alexa, turn down the thermostat. Okay, turning down Ready. thermostat. Ready. Huh. Here we go. What do you think people did before Alexa? Alexa, turn the temperature down two degrees. Thank you, dear. I, like I mean, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. Okay, same question, Mike. What is it? Is it execution? Is it conceptual? What, what's the secret of the sauce here? Yeah, obviously, execution is everything. It's the timing of the jokes is impeccable. Ellen is beloved by so many people, but it's what's great about it, it's, it's a product demonstration throughout the entire course of the ad. So it's not just a laugh for a laugh's sake. It's really telling you all the versatility that Amazon Alexa can bring to your life. And can I ask you, because I always, I always use the phrase, I would love to be in the meeting when you're a pro, you've been in these types of meetings before. Is it like a good script idea? Do you know in your heart, you've done this for a while, do you know when you and you and your crew have latched onto a great idea like this? Is it just something in, in your heart that you know, oh, this is a good concept? Yeah, I'd say about 90% of the time you have a very good feeling that you're onto something special. And this yeah. is after hours, months, hundreds of scripts of exploration to get to one really good one. Yeah. Okay, let's move to, oh, let's move to Hyundai. And this is the Smart, the Smart Park Boston <laughs> ad. Look at this. Look at these two troublemakers. Hey, Johnny, how are you? Wicked car, is that new? Yeah, it's a Sonata. Let me pack it. Oh, you're not fitting your car in there. Chris, stop being a smarty then. All right. Look who's got Smart Park. Smart Park? Just hit the clicker. Car packs itself. It's smart. It's wicked smart. And I can pack it anywhere. How about Dorchester? Packed it. Foxborough. Packed it. The Garden? Packed it. Saugus? Packed it. Swampscott? Revere? The Harbor? Are you kidding me? I packed it and then unpacked it. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Correct me if I'm wrong. This, to me, is a great use of the talent. Am I right on that one? Absolutely, yeah. It's uh, Some of the celebrities featured in that are from Boston, Boston natives. Uh, but it's this... this uh, this juxtaposition of all these different celebrities coming together to make something really, really interesting, but again, rooted in what is the product about and what makes it really unique. It's so smart, it's smart. Well, it's... <laughs> Mike. Oh, Mike. Yeah, to get that. Oh, and, it, and it's like a weird combo platter of celebrities you don't normally see together. Like, if you're sitting in, again, if yeah. I'm in the meeting, okay, we're gonna get Chris Evans, I wouldn't think to quit, put Chris Evans with Rachel Dratch. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and that's, I think that adds to the humor. Absolutely. And then you add a cameo by David Ortiz. Yeah. And you have something magical. Yeah, something magical. Okay, let's look at another one. We'll talk over this one. This is for Squarespace and Winona Ryder in, in Winona. Did this succeed with people outside of Minnesota? <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah, I I, I'm asking so. genuinely, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it scored in the bottom five of the USA Today ad meter. Uh, but it's, it's, it's really interesting. Why, why do you think is it people weren't connecting with the fact that Winona is a, actually, even though it says welcome to Winona, did people not connect the dots that it was a town and a person? It, it, yeah, it was, it was a lot of a story to tell in 30 seconds. Yeah. If you watch some of the teasers, and they had a three-minute film preceding the Super Bowl, if you got that context, then it probably meant a lot more to you, but in 30 seconds is a very difficult story to tell. Yeah, if you need a three-minute film to set up your commercial, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I ain't the expert Mike is, and speaking of Mike, we gotta take a break when we come back. The ads we hated and how people are reacting to them when we return. More with Mike, stay with us, everybody. Hate it. Yeah. 
yeah. What is happening? What is that? Is that a baby nut? Just kidding. I'm back. Where's my monocle? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Peanut doing a little Bobby Ewing up in there. Anyway, uh, Mr. Peanut, thank you, audience, for actually getting that old, old reference. Uh, Mr. Peanut reborn during the Super Bowl last night, causing the hashtag baby nut to trend on Twitter. <laughs> and I promise you from my heart that'll be the last time I ever say baby nut on this show. <laughs> We're back with a chief creative officer from Call McVoy Advertising Agency. Once again, Mike's here. Okay, uh, did you like that in all honesty? I thought it was okay. Uh, the commercial itself was, it was all right. It was entertaining, but not that memorable. But what they did extremely well was they planned their social media uh, activation extremely well. So Twitter was going crazy. They had an online store where you could buy merchandise. Uh, there was a lot of conversation right after that. So overall, I, a win. And I should say, this list is things I hated, not Mike. I am just saying, <laughs> I'm just getting Mike's feedback on this. That was, that's, that's interesting to know, the, the, the store. I mean, and I think they're capitalizing off the baby Yoda fa uh, craze. Yeah. Uh, anyway, okay. This is another one that I hated uh, because it just went on and on and on. Uh, Tide Pods. It showed up in every, every ad throughout the show. <laughs> But in your professional opinion, was it effective? I'm not sure. I don't think it was. And, and here's the reason. Tide did this, this gimmick uh, a couple of years ago in the Super Bowl, and it was absolutely brilliant. It was surprising. Uh, people were, couldn't stop talking about it. This year around, it was, it was not only um, the same exact joke told again, yeah. but it was, it was a little confusing. Like the, the, I was sitting with my family watching it, and they didn't know if it was a Bud Light ad or a Tide ad, and it was just really confusing. And then them. he showed up on the Singer. Yeah. I was like, what is it? <laughs> Stain dude showed up on the show. I'm like, what are you doing here? I, I then I, and I love Tide. And if they sponsor our show, <laughs> I'm just saying I, I love them. Just saying the ad was okay. Now this one, producer Ted, uh, he was at a bar last night. He said that <laughs> don't laugh, staff. <laughs> to the shock of no one, producer Ted was at a bar. But Ted said this played really well in the bar. I didn't like this because it creeped me out. I'm talking the Jason Momoa ad when he like took off his arm and he got like here we go. Okay, and look at it. It just Mike, it creeped me out a little bit. And you're oh Mike, your thoughts. <laughs> this is this is like watching something where you Kind of want to squint your eyes and look away, but you can't look away. Yeah. Uh, I was really surprised that this scored well in the USA Today ad meter. It did score well? It did. It did. It scored in the top 10. I hated it. I did. <laughs> it just creeped me out. Okay. Look, before we leave, let's talk about some trends that we haven't talked about. We did celebrity mashups. Nostalgia was big. Humor. I, I noticed there were a couple heavier ones. We'll get to those mm -hmm. maybe in a minute. But the... Wouldn't you say 90% went with humor this year? Absolutely. There was obviously the celebrity mashups, as you mentioned, but there was just straight up humorous spots, like what I call classic Super Bowl advertising. Yeah. Not trying too hard. Keep it simple. Just make you laugh. Remember the product and think favorably about the product. Let's end with the one that got everybody's heartstrings, the Google ad. Yes. Did that score high? And what were your thoughts on that one? It did score high. Uh, extremely, uh, extremely well done. How, you know, a technology brand... Um, playing into your heartstrings uh, did, did very well, and they've they've had a history of doing this over the years. Yeah, it's like up, but in a commercial. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought it was. Thank you for coming in as yeah, usual. Yeah, thank you. Thank Great you, to Mike, be here. everybody from Comic Boy. Still ahead. Right before producer Ted went to B Dubs, he went to the motorcycle show to find love. Did he? Did he succeed? You're going to find out when we return. Back after this. My goodness. Thank you, my friend. Thank Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> I'm squeezing her head right there. It's Aaron Schwab. Anyway, from, Har <laughs> from Harleys to Yamahas, it was a biker's paradise this weekend at the motorcycle show in Minneapolis. Of course, we had to send producer Ted to find the bike 
that'll go with his boat this summer and finally woo the ladies. And that, <laughs> audience, audience. <laughs> and that means once again, it's time for America Loves Ted. Now, if you're wondering what kind of motorcycle experience I have, well, let me tell you. I rode a moped in high school, 25 miles per hour, 30 on the downhill, so yeah, I know what I'm doing around here. What do we got here? We provide motorcycle enthusiasts and prospective riders access to hundreds of top vehicle models that are new for 2020. Do you have your motorcycle license yet? No. Okay, so after that, we're gonna get you on a bike. Are you ready? I'm ready. It's beyond your moped experience, but I think you can handle it. Well, they're basically the same thing. Two wheels. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kevin, I'm looking for a speed bike. This one caught my eye. What, what is this? This is this is our uh, 2020 Suzuki Hayabusa. Hayabusa is uh, one of the fastest top speed motorcycles we have. It goes down as the 1999 Guinness Book of World Records fastest production motorcycle. 194 miles an hour on the top speed. Is that what you're looking for? Yeah. Now, for someone whose only experience with motorcycles is my moped, do you recommend this bike? Ted, for you, I think we should try something else. Can I at least pretend? Absolutely, that's what we're here for. <laughs> Ted, you ready for the wind through your hair? Yeah. People look at me and they think I'm a Harley rider. Absolutely, I can see that. I really just want to impress people with my Harley. Uh, what is the etiquette rule for revving my engine? Where can I do it? How often can I do it if I want to ride around the block? Well, that's a great question. You know, revving the engine actually started because the motorcycles were choked and you needed to give it a little bit more gas to keep that motor going. Technology has changed and as people want to rev them, they don't need to. But for me, you can always rev your motorcycle anytime that you want but a lot of times they're already designed to catch people's attention. Scott, how loud can you be with revving the engine when it's off? <laughs> Guess as loud as you can <laughs> say, vroom vroom. <laughs> potato, potato. It's more of the Harley Davidson, is more of a potato, 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 potato. <laughs> Potato, 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 potato. Broom, 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 broom. So we've checked out a few motorcycles, but now I have to figure out how to be cool on the motorcycle. Tice, how do I how do I be cool? How can I do be cool on the motorcycle? Well, you're in the right place over here at the XTL Willie Experience as part of the motorcycle show. So we're gonna put you on the machines and we're gonna run you through it, and we'll have you looking cool by the end of the day. And what are we gonna do on here? Uh, we're gonna do some wheelies. Like, pop a wheelie? Gosh, kind of nervous with all <laughs> legit stuff here. I got help. Uh, I time it. to look cool. Just like your moped, uh, twist and go on the throttle, right? Yeah. Towards your body to accelerate, a way to decelerate. If you get nervous, just let go of it. You'll slow down. Yeah. All right, go ahead and pick the bike up for me. Now this motorcycle is on and idling. So what I want you to do is just very gently roll the throttle back, nice and slow. You'll feel it vibrate a little bit. Okay, ladies, close your eyes. Imagine riding off into the sunset with me because it's about to get real. Potato, 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 vroom, vroom, vroom. Oh, God. Oh, God. That was so good. I, I got to tell you, the staff and I, we just can't figure out why he's still single. I mean, I just say, it is just a mystery to us. Uh, congratulations to photographer Eric for putting that together. That was a piece of television right there. If you want to go out with Ted, his number's at the bottom of your screen. We'll be right back, everybody. Stay with us. Back after this. <laughs> oh, God. Welcome back, friends. Welcome back. 
potato, 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 potato. The sheer fear on his uh, face. You know, uh, they do that separated at birth thing. Uh, yeah. I forgot on what show they do. I have found a separated at birth. Now, Kendall, close your eyes. Audience, close your eyes. I'm going to fall asleep if I close my That's eyes. That's fine. And remember, remember Ted in the motorcycle helmet. Are you ready? Yeah. I present to you Ted's double from the Flintstones, the Great Gazoo. <laughs> Very attractive. <laughs> it's your fault he's single. I can't. It is. We do, we do these pieces to get him a date, and it's backfiring. It is backfiring horribly. We do all of this stuff so Ted gets a date, and and. I don't know. I just gotta tell you, but the Great Kazoo. I mean, it's it's absolutely perfect. Wonderful reference. Potato, potato, potato. Hey, if you wanna, just like these fine people who got old snacks and hugs, you can come to our show uh, and get fabulous prizes. Uh, all you have to do is go to our Jason Show Facebook page, click that ticket tab. You're in by 9:15. You're out by 11:15. We also accept groups. So if you're a business that wants to do a fun outing with your employees. We would love to have you. We're going to wrap up the show with the Great Kazoo when we return. <laughs> Back after this, everybody. <laughs> potato, 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 potato. <laughs> Brand new month, and I feel bad. My friend Dawn McLean from the radio show, she's on our show too. Her favorite holiday is Groundhog Day. And oh, I feel like that's people. A, that's a, that, wait, I'm sorry. Groundhog Day got cheated. I mean, you know what I mean? Groundhog Day. It did, it got cheated because it's mixed up with Super Bowl Sunday. People Nobody. People celebrate Groundhog Day? How dare you shame the rodent? Yes, people do. <laughs> Um, first of all, he lives a very fabulous life. He in does. The library yeah. most of and the time. again, he brought us good news early spring. So, yeah. Next in the dish. Yeah, next in the dish. The show's <laughs> almost over, Jason. Uh, we thought this was great. One of Hallmark's upcoming Christmas movies is going to have a very Minnesota feel to it. Why do I say that? Well, two rival real estate agents will compete over a listing for a hometown inn that goes up for sale. But will the inn's charm bring the two rivals together? Now, we can pretend we don't know how this ends. That end will be the Erickson Farmstead, which has been a landmark in Asante County for more than 100 years. It was placed on the National Historic Register in the late 70s, and most of the movie will be shot at that farmhouse. But some other scenes will be, will be shot in the Twin Cities, which means, ladies and gentlemen, the campaign has begun to get producer Ted a cameo in that movie. That's right. I yes. Want to do it too. But he's the Hallmark guy. I know, but I, know. I want to do it too, Jason. You can play Ted's wife in the movie. I'm just oh, saying, great. yes. But Hallmark executives, Leo, can we go to camera five? Maybe, maybe not. Anyway, if the Hallmark, <laughs> hello, Hallmark. <laughs> Dear Hallmark, we will do anything, anything, if you will put our producer Ted in your Hallmark movie shot here in Minnesota. Thank you. Speaking of Ted, tomorrow on the show, he's going to recap uh, the latest Bachelor. And live in our studio, a guy from St. Paul and his pet duck, Ben Affquack. I'm not making that up, and the thing can drum. I'm just saying. That's tomorrow. We're going to see you then. Go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Have a great day, everybody.